excited to hear from you, clients and coaches. So you can take the floor. I'm excited that you all made time to, to be here as well. So thank you so much. If we haven't met virtually, my name is Jennifer Jacobs. And I'm one of the things I've done is created a program called Job One, which maybe many of you have already done, gone through a round, maybe on your second or third, who knows? And maybe some of you are interested to hear more about what it's all about. So big thing with me is always the why. So I'd love to delve into the why behind job one, because when you have a strong why in anything you do, and I'm sure as many of the coaches on this call know, when you have that why and you're passionate about it, you will do just about anything to achieve it. Meaning you're willing to put in that hard work without the why, why even bother? So the why behind job one is years of experience working one-on-one -on -one with clients. Ever since I was in college, I fell into personal training at a young age at 19, and it helped me create my own business that put me through college. So that was such a blessing. But more importantly, from the financial aspect is what I learned from working with individuals on a daily basis. I learned that I had the potential to help change somebody's not just fitness journey, but their life improving their life. And that really touched me deeply. And it empowered me to educate myself ongoing for years to learn how to do it in the most effective way possible. Because the number one complaint from a client or a prospective client is, I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time for me. I definitely don't have time for an hour to go to the gym and commit and do three times a week because that's how often you would meet with your personal trainer if you were lucky enough to have one. That being said, I knew that was an issue. And then when I took my one-on-one -on -one training business virtually at a very early time in this industry, which was back in 2006. So this was before virtual training was a thing. And I used this platform called Skype. Remember Skype? Yeah. So it's, it's back then. And it was a client suggestion who at the time I was living in France, they were living in New York. And the gentleman said, I don't go into the city like my wife does to go to Equinox. So I need a solution. I want you to train me in my garage. You go in your garage in France, I'll go in mine and you train me. So that's how I started virtually training people. And from there, word of mouth was, I got an effect, as an effective workout with Jennifer in my garage than I did with a personal training in a gym. And she's elite. So how to access her became a virtual business that I created. From there, I had this huge dream to make a big name for myself. So outside of my 12 clients, which was fantastic living in the South of France, 12 clients from London, New York, uh, you name it. And I still wanted more, like in terms of reaching more people. And that's what led me to New York to chase this crazy dream that led me to this company that was really small at the time called Peloton, where I became one of their top instructors teaching virtual cycling, and then led me here now to Beachbody. So that's my fitness journey, how I've now become a Beachbody super trainer and created this program, Job One. So taking it back to my virtual experience, one-on-one -on -one with clients that I still do to this day, because it's incredibly rewarding and I learn a lot, but also it's led me to come to this realization that time is an issue. Time is an issue, and I developed over time this concept of what if we could train less, gain more? And the word gain for sometimes people go, oh, gain, what's that mean? Means a lot of things. You can gain more results. You can gain more time by training less. The only way you can do that, though, is if you effectively train in a shorter amount of time. So I like to use this analogy of going to the dentist. I absolutely love going to the dentist. You all go to the dentist, what, once, twice a year, right? They clean your teeth and they're like, how do you do? It usually takes you an hour. But what if one time you went to the dentist and they cleaned your teeth and it only took 20 minutes? Some people might say, I don't know, dentist. I don't know if my teeth are clean. You want to like go back and try that again? No, your teeth are sparkling clean. You absolutely don't need your teeth cleaned anymore. They just got the job done in less time. So hopefully that makes sense to you because in it's my experience, people want to achieve more without putting in more work. But I think anyone who's used to maybe, um, especially home fitness, we become a little skeptical of 
how can we even get results in less time? Like we have to be jumping. Do we have to be doing crazy things? Is it gonna be all high intensity? So I'm here to let you know, it comes down to the programming and what job one features is something very unique. It's what I coined muscle cyclicality. I don't talk too much about it, but what it is, it's the cycling of various muscle groups so that we do not cause overstrain overuse. We hit enough of the muscles within a session that we burn enough calories because 20 minutes is a short amount of time. But in the session, I'm so effective with your time. It's what you would accomplish in a 30 minute session because there's no long breaks. There's no, I don't have a cast. And so if you're used to beach body content, most of them have casts where that does take a lot of the super trainer's attention away from you. And it's my experience working one-on-one -on -one with people. When I look at a camera, I'm looking at you. I'm talking to you. That's just the kind of trainer I am. So we get a lot of work done in a short amount of time. I think the misconception is the effectiveness of it, but that's where our test group is very strong because our test group are real people, real people who didn't even know what my last name was. They're not coaches that work with Beachbody. They are real people. I have one woman, her name is Ricky, who had insane results. She's continuing to train. We now coined it the job one way because it's just such an enjoyable way to train. She's in my bod group. I'm like, you're not sick of this? And she's like, no, I'm getting amazing results. And it just fits my needs. It's created this foundation that if I want to go to a Pilates class with my friend on the weekend, or if I want to do that boot camp, I have the ability, I have the stamina to do so because I've created that solid foundation. And that foundation is based upon what this fancy word people throw around for years now, functional training. And what that means is movements that help you perform your daily tasks better. If you have kids, you're carrying one on your hip. If you have to lug in the groceries and you only wanna do it in one sweep, how will you be able to hold all those bags and engage your core and walk through that door? So functional movements typically don't cause injury. You're able to lift more effectively they're not crazy moves where it takes you 30 seconds to learn the move. And by that time, you've already missed that opportunity of that timed interval. So I'm, this program for me is also a program now looking back, I wish I had as a new mom, because as a new mom back then, there was a program, it was, I think it was called 30 Day Shred by Jillian Michaels, if you've ever heard of it. And if you've ever like purchased it and owned the DVD, which I did, also bought a Tracy Anderson postnatal DVD too. This like thing with the arms, you know, and no, no, no shade on any of those programs, but 30 day shred is the same workout for what, eight days. And then you do another workout for eight days, sort of. So it gets a little boring, but it is at that time was the jam. Like it was the thing to do, but it didn't engage me enough at that point kind of felt more like work. I didn't look forward to it. So my goal with my first program with Job One was to create that opportunity to get people in, especially new people who've been resistant to home fitness. I honestly believe that's the best way I personally train. That's how I train all my clients. Some of them have crazy gyms in their home. Some people have not even a yoga mat and we get the job done meaning it doesn't take much to get an effective workout. And what's so great about home fitness is the fact that you don't have to commute. You don't gotta be bothered by people at the gym. You don't gotta wait for anything. I was just thinking the other day, I live in New York City and I was like, maybe I'll change apartments. Maybe I'll go to one that has like a nice gym in it. I mean, there's a gym here, but don't bother going to it. And I thought to myself, I actually get the best workouts right here in my living room. And that's someone who's, this is my job. This is my job, fitness is my job. You would think I'd be in some like elite gym, but in fact, this is where I get the best workout. So that being said, anybody who's on the fence, I would love to answer any questions you have so that I could maybe help shift your mindset. And when I talk about mindset, that's also part of job one. The things I'm saying to you, hopefully, not only the program creating a stronger body, but it creates a stronger mindset because I've been that person who's been told you shouldn't, you couldn't, you wouldn't. 
I've been, unsu I've been surrounded by unsupportive people who doubted my dreams, who actually wanted to hold me back from chasing them down. And it's when you have the right support and enough self-belief that you can achieve those crazy dreams that you've set out for yourself that other people have deemed crazy. Now, that being said, that's what I hope you also gain from job one. Not just the workout because there's so many fitness programs. Why job one? Again, like I said, it's that whole mentality of making yourself as important as your job. If your boss, if your body was your boss now, are you going to call in sick? Are you going to show up late? No, you're going to get that job done because you've, that's what you've signed up for. And that's what job one's all about. And we make it easy to do that because it's only 20 minutes. Doesn't mean the workouts are going to be easy, but it's easy. It's effective. And it is truly for everyone. I believe job one is an opportunity to get the people started. And for some people, it'll be the thing that keeps them going because they love the format, the cadence, that no two workouts are the same, yet it's still progressive. I myself do job one until I start developing my next program. I selfishly created a program for myself. In fact, that, and I've, you know, I've been at this for a while where I've created my own content. I always love to watch my content back because that's where I learn. And there's been times where I'm watching something back in the day. I'm like, oh, God, it's, it's really, it's not good. Um, and it's a, it's a great accomplishment that I had such an incredible team, Beachbody to produce something at this level that's so timeless. This will be something I'm proud of 20 years from now. Um, I actually had dinner with Jillian Michaels what, last year and we talked about 30 Day Shred. She didn't say she was the most proud of that. She just boasted how well it sold. Uh, but she didn't say I, I do 30 Day Shred. Uh, but that being said, being proud of the work you put in is very important. And each day you come to job one, I want you to be proud of yourself. I want you to feel supported by me. And that's what I hope to achieve. So if there's any questions, that's where I kind of want to open this up a little bit, make it more conversational, especially for those who are a little, I don't know, what would you call it? Resistant or hesitant, or maybe too afraid to start, right? I hope I, we didn't intimidate you with this program with all the the sizzle and the, and the movements, because it really is a simple, approachable program. I'm going to go into the chat because I know a lot of people are muted just to see. I just made you cry. Oh, well, hopefully in a very good way. Um, oh, these are great comments. You haven't done job one yet, Charlotte, but I cannot wait to start it when you get home. Okay, good. It's, it is, Parts of it are travel friendly, by the way, because we do use those resistance loops. So you can, once you go through a round, you know where to pick and pull. So if anyone's thinking, oh, I don't know if I want to start job one because it's only four weeks. Well, it's something that will definitely grow with you. And I say it in the last session. I say it in the last session that I'm going to see you on Monday without saying Monday. I say we're going to start strong. Every week we start strong and we end the week by finishing stronger. The formats on all five days, there's three strength, two cardio. Those formats are always the same, but those muscle pairings always change. And the movements are not redundant so that each round, it feels very fresh and that you're able to apply yourself more and use those cues that I'm giving you on number one thing you wanna achieve in any session, any program is muscle fatigue. Whether that be strength or cardio, in a cardio session, you want to fatigue, you want to tax your cardiovascular system in what other, in plenty of ways, but in the two ways we're featuring our high intensity interval training and more of an endurance based. And so there's two systems we're trying to attack. So you've got to bring the intensity and I always tell you exactly how I want you to feel. So you know, you're bringing the right amount of intensity and on our strength days, you want to fatigue the muscles. So if I say there's 30 seconds, or if I say there's 45 seconds, you've got to select the appropriate weight that by the end of that time frame, you cannot easily do another 30 seconds. 
It's gotta be the last couple of reps with good form, not failure, but fatigue. I know many of my clients would like to work out daily or longer for mental health, yes. What do you recommend to add on if they need more for the mental health release? One of the most amazing things, which is not something you can sell to people, so for your client, is a walk. I know that's like, huh, a walk? If we're talking about mental health, a walk is one of the greatest things you can do. I don't care what length of walk, if you only have 10 minutes, if you have an hour, if you do multiple walks in the day, that is the number one way to free your mind and also get your body moving optimally. So a lot of times we don't even extend our hips fully. We're seated here, so we flex at our hips. Walking is one of the greatest things we can do to our body. We used to walk so much more back in the day when you know your grandma or great grandparents had to go get milk from the cows and bring. Like we used to walk. <laughs> Count the steps you take today. We have to have a tracker that literally tells us how many times we've stepped in a day. It's for, I mean, come on. We didn't do that back then, and we lead, we led healthier lives. So a walk. And also the new tier that we have at Beachbody, Body, which is live interactive classes. There's some great aspects of that. Now in this industry, it's, it's dense in terms of that offering, live intera interactive classes. Maybe not as interactive as we're doing it, but live classes. Anywhere you look, everyone's doing that. So what's so, what's so unique about that? Well, at Body, you have the opportunity to come into that podcast, to be a part of it, which guess what? Makes you more accountable, makes you push yourself a little harder. But we also have a plethora of opportunity there with Pilates, bar, yoga, meditation. So these are things you can definitely add on. So that's, that's what I would recommend to the client. Good question. I jumped in after doing 645. So finding I'm holding back, not used to the 20 minutes, telling myself it's only 20 minutes. So 645, I'm so grateful to come right after this program. It's the first functional program that job, um, that, job, that Beachbody has put out where it really helps you unlearn some of the bad habits you might've had, uh, maybe you didn't know because it's slower. He breaks it down, it's highly effective. It's a huge commitment. Not everyone wants to commit six days a week, 45 minutes for nine weeks. Is it nine or eight? It's nine, right? Okay, right. Nine. okay, huge commitment, but a huge benefit. That being said, very grateful to come after that because anyone who went through it kind of learned a lot and now is very grateful for 20 minutes, but you have to absolutely bring it in those 20 minutes. Since we're doing two sets, I believe he does four sets. Typically people start to underperform after the second set, just so you know, you don't usually get better unless you have adequate rest, which he definitely uh, allows for. So in those two sets, you've got to push yourself. And I see a lot of times people picking up the fives, the eights, when they should really be picking up the 15s or the 20s. That being said, always listen to your body. The goal, the name of the game, muscle fatigue. And when it comes to hit, you really shouldn't be doing more than 20 minutes if you're effectively doing it because it just creates even more stress on our bodies, more stress on our bodies. If you want to lose weight, if you want to lower stress, well, guess what? It ain't going to happen for you. Too much stress is a bad thing. And time and time again, people think, I want to change. I got to do more. It's got to be more intense. I got to do more. But really, we got to look at our nutrition. When you want to focus on change and when we want to focus on stress reduction, there's things we can do to ourselves: Self-massage, breathing techniques, take a bath, light a candle, minus listen to music. That is like automatic stress reliever, good music. Brittany's done it twice. Definitely will be doing it again. Good. We lifted much heavier in the second time and felt stronger. Love it. My six-year-old cousin did it with me in a couple of days too. Okay, good. I've been noticing a lot of adolescents. Um, I got the best message ever of my life. So I'm a mother of two. I have a, I hate to say it, She's turning 14 soon. Um, <laughs> so me saying I'm 24 is just unbelievable at this point. That's uh, <laughs> a joke. But she texted me the other day and she said, mom, uh, can you give me, what's the app for job one? And I was like, oh, whoa, I gotta play it cool, you know? Like I can't let her, I'm like, oh, here's the app. She goes, what's the sign in? I'm like, oh, here. And I was thinking, oh. so I couldn't like 
So even t- this was a week ago. So today she goes, oh, guess what? I, I'm doing job one. I'm like, oh, you are? Cool. That's cool. Because, you know, if you overreact with these teenagers, it's game over. No cap, which means no lie. Just so you know, you got to get in that Gen Z lingo here, uh, which I feel like a lot of you are. <laughs> uh, you love that it's only 20 minutes. You love the hybrid. The hybrid is magic. The hybrid is, again, a way to get our customers to come over to body. So it's an incentive to body. It's five sessions that are absolute pure fire and pretty much a progression from job one. People are like, ooh, I want like job one advanced. Okay, well, we'll go to hybrid and tack on the first 10 minutes of the hybrids. That's the strength portion. Then we get on the bike and we do 10 minutes of certain drills each of those five days. I've been using my bod group. I am obsessed with the bod groups, by the way. I just went live and made a chocolate cake with them. The fact that everything is in one app is amazing. Like, I can't tell you how many times you go on an app and they're like, okay, join me on my Facebook page. Okay, join me over here on YouTube. No, like I want everything in one place. And the fact that we have that in our app, amazing. Will it improve over time? Of course it will. But went live with them and I've been running this challenge this month, which is the daily work assignment where I tell you each day what I want you to do in addition to your job one session. And it usually requires just 10 more minutes. So I love that you love the hybrid. You've done it three times. Oh, I, iPad in power. I don't know what your name is, but the comment right above Brittany's. Um, 16 years ago. So exercise is life changing for your mental health, Krista. I'm happy to hear that. You've been doing probably Tori, the 37 days of body. You've probably been doing the 60 and 60 challenge, which is a great way to get people excited about body. Again, 60 workouts in 60 days, you have the opportunity to choose those workouts. You want to make sure they're just not too intense so we don't overtrain. But yes, I love it. 13, yes. I'm guilty of that. You lifted heavier, okay. How do you get through, so this is from Shailene. How do you get through a mental block when you're starting your workout? Sometimes when I show up, my mindset takes away from my workout. Any tips? Well, one tip when I'm not feeling it, that's when I energize, by the way, (laughs) when I'm not feeling a workout, that's when I grab my energize and I mix mix berry and lemon. And that usually pumps me up. But the other day I got distracted and started to clean my walls. Um, that's, that's pre-workout for you. You know, Mr. Clean, those white brushes, those little went to town, then got my workout in though. Point is, uh, how to push through a mental block. Remind yourself, you gotta do a little self-talk. What's on the other side? What's on the other side? Instead of thinking about what we're going to burn, what we're going to lose, what are we going to gain? How are we going to feel? Remind yourself of the feeling you feel after a workout. We all typically feel amazing. We feel great. 20 minutes with job one is going to leave you feeling empowered without you feeling white. So remind yourself of that. Like sometimes even through the workout, I look up and I see the time and I'm like, oh my gosh, there's only five more minutes. Okay, I I can do it. Like, let's go. Even me, myself, I need somebody there to tell me what to do. And so that's what I'm there for throughout that session. And hopefully you just, again, remind yourself what's on the other side, how you're going to feel. I love how job one helps you create a routine that you love. You've done it three times, your favorite program. And it's always there for you to go back to, of course, 14 year olds, they can be tough now. They're tough. Okay, I'm a little behind in these. Uh, You can use the hybrid in a plethora of ways. Um, The calendar that we've provided is typically you do a round of job one, then the next week you do just the hybrid. The hybrid is minimal work. It's one body part, except for the exception of one of the five, it's glutes and core. It's one body group that you're taxing, and then you go back into another round. But what I'm doing with my bod group right now is testing something for future calendars to help job one have a lot of legs for a lot of span. In April, I'll be running a core and glutes challenge for that month. You know, you always hear like a core challenge, but I'm going to add the glutes in there too, because they're part of our core. Amen to energize. I love that. (laughs) What is your go-to motivational quote? This is from Lauren. Also, thank you so much for coming tonight. Oh, thank you. Hello. Thank you for being here, Lauren. My go-to motivational quote that I created myself is the sky is not the limit, it's just the view. And what that means is that once you reach 
that new height. You're able to have a new vantage point of yourself to see yourself more clearly and to climb even higher. So you do not stop there. You continue to go even higher, challenging yourself. Without challenge, we don't grow. And if we don't grow, we die. That's a truly believe that. So surround yourself who, around people who are willing to grow, willing to learn from. You don't want to be the smartest person in the room, as they say. Right? So why would you want to be in a room with a bunch of people who don't want to grow? So always trying to grow to be better. Motivational quote from somebody else is from Vincent Van Gogh. What would life be if we had no courage to attempt anything? I actually saw this quote walking the streets of New York back in 2015, where I had auditioned at another studio. This studio needs no name. Like we're not even gonna talk about it. No, it doesn't even exist anymore. <laughs> Point is, I went and auditioned, at which this is so New York. I had never auditioned for a thing in my life. I'm like, all these fitness people here are like Broadway performers and they kind of do this on the side hustle. Me, I'm like, okay, an audition, whatever. The woman looks at me and she goes, I don't know. I just don't know if you have what it takes. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, okay. And I walked back and I thought to myself, oh, wow. And at this point, I already had my other audition lined up with Peloton. And I'm thinking, I don't know what it takes. Before the Peloton edition was another audition for another cycling class. So first I have this one woman telling me, I don't know if we have what it takes. Then I auditioned for this other place where they basically, the guy stops my music and says, do that again, but don't talk this time. It's like, whoa, this is nuts. Like, <laughs> and then they said to me, we, let, we love you. Uh, we just have to train you for six weeks. And I said, you know, let me think about it because I've got this other audition over here. So I'm walking home from the second audition where it's just not going too hot for me. And on the floor, I see a piece of paper and it has this beautiful doodle on it. And it's this woman, I guess she was just leaving them all over the streets of New York. And on the other side, it would have a quote. And that was the quote. What if you had, what would life be if you had the courage to attempt nothing? That quote meant so much to me. So when I walked to those Peloton studios back in 2015, bumping Eminem, lose yourself, I was ready. I was ready. I was, you know, uh, but you just have to be you. And it might not please everyone, but as long as you're authentic and true to who you are and you make your goal is to help people, whatever you do, if you're, you're crafting, if you're a doctor, if you're helping people, when you truly help somebody, people receive that better than when you try to sell them something. So great question. How do you, uh, Olivia, how do you keep up with your nutrition? All of the meals, you look so good, look, look so good and you stay consistent. Let me be honest with you. It's not consistent all the time when I travel. Like I just went to France. I was there for two weeks, you know, didn't really do the job one because I didn't have dumbbells. So I was like, oh, I'll do a couple sweat sessions. I don't want to do hit it. I'll do the recovery and stretch. But, and then I went a week into body and I just cycled for the week, which is not always great for, for my body. Um, it's just too much cardio. And the eating wasn't on point. That's life. If you're eating the same thing every single day, you're probably not having the most fun with your food and having like experiences. Like when, I'm not saying y'all go to France, but, and it might not be that, but like, what if you go to Disney? You're gonna be like, oh, I can't have that. Everything in moderation is my belief. You should be able to taste everything. But when you think about fueling your body, fuel it with what you need. Like, do I need a whole donut to fuel myself? Absolutely not. Do I want to have some of this donut? <laughs> Absolutely. Will sometimes I'll eat the entire donut? Yes, when I've decided to get married to it. So I got this three date bite approach where you approach these foods that are typically not I don't want to say unhealthy, but just aren't going to properly fuel you. Uh, I say we're going on a little date, all right? So if it's a cup, it's a donut, we can have a bite. Let me tell you what happens in the first bite. You either love it or you don't. It's just like a date. So you taste it. The second bite, it doesn't get better. It's just the same. 
And then the third bite, it's kind of like, all right, I kind of got all the taste. Now I'm just filling myself up with this thing. So that's how I approach those kind of food items so that I'm never restricting myself or eliminating certain foods that I can have whatever it is that I want to enjoy. Because food, there is a lot of association with enjoyment. But my approach to nutrition that helps me stay consistent is prioritizing protein, making sure I get enough in. So that's the one macronutrient that I actually am very conscious of so that I don't have to worry about how much of the other stuff I can't have. So I'm not of that mentality I can't have because it just doesn't develop a healthy relationship. And then prioritizing nutrient dense foods. That means foods with the vitamins, the minerals, and those are usually foods that are fruits and vegetables and whole grains. They typically don't come out of packages. So that being said, when I prioritize those two things, I get enough water, then everything else works well. What does that mean, prioritize protein? If I could give you anything from this and like, I, how many times have I been asked, well, how much protein should I eat? Typically, it depends on what your goals are, it depends on you. So I would never tell anyone what they should do. But me, myself, I hit about 20 to 30 grams per meal, depending on how many meals I'm having in a day. It could be five, it could be two. It depends. If I'm traveling, it's not that much because I'm sitting down. If it's, it's typically on average three to four meals a day. That being said, if I'm hitting 20 grams in those four meals, that's 80 grams of protein. If it's 30, I'm up, I'm up a little higher, 120. It doesn't have to be the same every single day. You don't want to fix on numbers. But if I'm typically getting 20 to 30 grams per meal, I'm feeling really good because guess what protein does? It makes you feel fuller longer. So job one, we don't just prioritize ourselves. We also prioritize our protein. That's why there's nine options with job one in terms of those three categories. You're either getting the Shakeology, you're either given the Recover, which is my go-to staple, and then there's this uh, Glow and Go, which is the Energize and Collagen. Mixed berry and limit. <laughs> so good question about nutrition. But you got to find what works for you. You know, if you're like an intermittent faster because you perform well in the morning without having a meal and you don't get hungry and it doesn't create like overeating within the day at certain meals, then you time those meals accordingly to get enough protein and enough nutrients. Any tips for overcoming fears or doubt? So self-doubt is a bitch, to be honest with you. Self-doubt will stop you right in your tracks of anything you want to pursue. But we have the opportunity to change that with our thoughts, with our thinking. That comes down to a lot of self-talk. It also comes down to the people you surround yourself with. And you look like you've surrounded yourself with the right kind of people to help empower you. When it comes to fear, fear is a good thing. Fear is a response to our bodies and to our minds. It usually comes at moments of change or discomfort. My tip there is to embrace that. Embrace the fear you're feeling because it usually means you're moving in the right direction. And I'm not talking about fear like for safety but you're moving in the right direction if you start to fear things because you know you are challenging yourself. So accept that, know you're either of a fixed mindset or a growth. And if you're someone who wants to grow, you are willing to open yourself up to change, which then comes in fear. Any advice on what to do using the bands really hurts your hands, the bands swish, the band pinch, pinch. Okay, um, you're probably talking about like when we do the movements with the arms. I don't put my hands in the band. I put them around, I choke up, but I understand what you're saying. I recommend wearing gloves if that's bothersome to you and if that helps, that might help. How do you join my bot group? Um, I bet Shauna can share the link. I've shared it multiple times in my Instagram story. Uh, you click it, you ask to be invited. And I will invite and, and I will accept you. There's no prerequisites by any means. I'm glad you love the quote. I'm glad people are on this 
I mean, I'm new here. So me mixing lemon and mixed berry was like an epiphany to me. <sighs> um, I rate my food. A treat that isn't a nine or 10 isn't worth it. Lori, I feel you. Have you ever like been really looking forward to something and you start to eat it and you're like, this is not even like, gotta be honest with yourself. Is it even worth it? Like, it's okay. I know you spent $5 on that cookie, but you know, you just threw away $5. Doesn't mean you should put the garbage down your throat. I think people, we think we pay for something. We got to eat it. Your mom put the food on your plate. You got to clean it. That's not how it works anymore. We have the opportunity to control what we put into our bodies. And we have to have that ability to have some control over ourselves and when it comes to those things. But it doesn't mean we should uh, eliminate them because when we do that, then we want them even more. I just, you know, and sometimes you, there's other ways to get that satisfaction and do it in a better for you way. I know if you scroll TikTok or Instagram, you're going to see a recipe for like a four ingredient cake and <laughs> I've been the victim of that where it's like, okay, you just take these ingredients, you make it, and then it tastes like a dog biscuit. So when I ever I share anything, I try to make sure it's been tested and like I test it in front of you. That's what I just did in the VOD group. I wanted a chocolate cake. I basically took a nap. I napped so hard that I woke up thinking about food. And I thought, oh, well, I need protein. How am I going to do this? So I made this chocolate cake with a chocolate protein frosting, which is the recover mixed with, you can just mix it with water, but, and drizzled what I, this is my go-to. I take blueberries or raspberries, raspberries at this point, because they're loaded with fiber. One cup has eight grams of fiber. So you want to improve your digestion. You want to feel full or longer fiber. And I microwave them for like 30 seconds. So they kind of explode. And then I just drizzle that on top of pancakes, on top of this chocolate, what did they call it in the group? They called it a chocolate frosted brownie. That's what it looked like, because the cake was, oh, so good. Anyways, got my, you know, little over, you know, around 25 grams of protein right there. Amazing. Do I have a favorite podcast? I have not committed that hard to one. I'll be very honest. I love podcasts. It's actually the thing I do in a bath. I take a daily bath, so it doesn't have to be at night. When I don't take the daily bath, I don't feel that great. Like my body, I don't feel as calm. And that's where I listen to my podcasts. Take an hour in this bath. And I've listened to podcasts from our own coaches. Uh, one of the coaches, Melissa McAllister, has this podcast called Melissa Made. Great information about her approach. I've listened to podcasts. Um, I really enjoy listening to public figures who are inspirational. So of course, those kind of things. Uh, what was the one I listened to today? So I do, I do like to listen. Moon, it's called Moon, what is this? It's a series called Moonshots Podcast. So it's like learning out loud. So they have like people who wrote books, people who wrote things. It's kind of like the cliff notes of that journey. And then there's also a book that I definitely always gravitate towards and I highly recommend. I'm trying to kind of recreate this book when it comes to mindset and fitness. It's called Exactly What to Say. This book has helped me open so many doors. So if you're a coach and you're trying to help your client but can't find the right words, it's called Exactly What to Say. This is a book I always keep kind of on hand when I'm trying to write that email. I've been in offices of the CEO of Disney. I've been in the HBO Hulu with these lead-ins. And one of the best lead-ins from this book is you, you have your idea that you want to present and you say, if you're open-minded and then you go into it. Just that, who here wants to be considered closed-minded? probably no one. So the fact that you started your sentence there already has that person in a position to, to be open and receptive to what you're going to say next. Uh, any PD book recommendations? What is a PD recommend? What does PD mean? Personal development. Um, 
I will be honest with you. I don't do a lot of those books, but somebody, um, I don't typically read those books, but one person gifted me with this huge hardcover book, like about this thick, and I'm just like, what the heck? And I opened it and I was like, wow, this is pretty good. It's called Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss. And it's stories of people like, for instance, I think The Rock has a story in there that are give you quick, tangible tools that this person applied to their life. So if you're kind of looking for that kind of a personal development approach, I appreciate books that are nonfiction and based around like autobiographies or biographies like the book about Muhammad Ali, I really cherish. I'm a Judd head, if you know what that is, that's the Judds. Um, and so I love the book, Love Can Build a Bridge, I know. I, <laughs> um, I don't consider that a self-help book, but that's the kind of books I like to read. And I tend to like to read the book again. Uh, for instance, A Ride of a Lifetime from the CEO, uh, previous CEO of Disney is a great book too. Hopefully that helps. Banana Recover Pancakes are yummy. Oh. Well, what is that? I assume you're using Recover and Bananas. Actually, I've done that. And then I add Skier, which is a form of yogurt that's for, like created in, that's how they make yogurt in Iceland. And those come out really amazing. Oh, here she goes. Recover, banana, egg, almond milk. Okay. I like that. I like that a lot. We're going to have to try that way. Oh, thank you for sharing the link, Lori, for that book. Okay, any other questions? I want to. I don't want to hold you the whole entire night. We could just be chatting forever. We probably have another one of these calls in the future for sure. Do a little workout together. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Hi. Um, sorry, I'm a very vocal person. I'd rather talk instead of type. Um, <laughs> Um, my question for you is I'm like you, I did the gym thing and it wasn't really my thing. I've loved working out at home so much more. Um, so my question for you is I still get a lot of people that say that they don't feel like they get as good of a workout at home than when they go to the gym. So what would be your number one reason why you like working out at home instead of the gym slash, what would you say to them? Well, there could be two reasons they feel that way. It could be the motivating factor of being around other people in the gym, um, which does create a lot of heightened atmosphere, does increase your performance, that's for sure. And then having the proper equipment, like if you're working with light dumbbells at home, are you gonna get as an effective workout as you're gonna get with the full set of weights, the bench and all the shebang? Probably not. How to help this person is to direct them to a program that you know is going to be engaging, but also effective. So the number one thing is you wanna present a client with a program that they're gonna to connect to. So you know how many programs we have, you have to find them the right, it's not just the program itself, but it's the right super trainer that's gonna meet them where they need to be. So they feel that connection. When you feel connected, it's the same thing when you go into a gym, you kind of feel connected to the fact that I'm in the gym. It's like, yeah, I feel this. But I've been seeing a lot of things on social where people are not currently having great experiences in the gym because if you've been to a gym lately, people are filming themselves, they're hogging machines and weights. It's like a little aggressive, it depends the gym you go to by any means. But finding your client the right program so they get results, but more importantly, which people don't typically say, it's how the content will engage them. Because if you give them a program the first go around and there's like, eh, you lose them. You lose that person. They're never gonna come back to you because they're gonna be like, that was a joke. That was an absolute joke. So you have to make sure you're finding them the right thing. Um, but I would show them, obviously that's the greatest thing we have at Beachbody are the before and afters. You take any influencer out there, they don't have the before and afters. There are some influencers that have them. People are stealing other people's pictures at this point. Uh, I feel like one of our coaches was, she had just posted, she was being used in some like 13 day slim fast thing, her before and afters. What we have are those testimonials. And so lead with those, but it comes down to just finding the right program where the person is like locked in. And I think that what that's truly what job one does. There's no cast. So there's none of this like 
distraction. It's like, hey, hi, you ready? Let's go. So I guarantee they're gonna feel that fatigue that they would have felt in the gym again in less time. So sell them on, uh, sorry, like let's take that word away, not sell them. Help them, help them realize that the effectiveness from at home, like break it down for them. How long does it take you to get to the gym? Once you're at the gym, when do you start? Like let's count the time up that you used here and let me show you this 20 minute program that will get you, if not the same or better results. That's how you help them. I'm gonna help you save time. So that's where job one really allows you to do that. It's that tool, that acquisition tool. <laughs> yeah, well, I I'm like just saw something in the chat. You save a shit ton too. Yes, <laughs> in terms of money. Yes, you know, gyms, they don't really care about us. Gyms do not care about us, by the way. They want us to sign up and never come in that door. They really don't care if you ever do. That's my experience. I bet you could really work hard, Tori, on the podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I love that. And not saying in a future program, I will never have a cast. There might be, you know, the next program I might have a cast. Think about those things. It would be a, definitely a different program though. I would say so far, I really like the cast programs. Okay, Ariane. And they're, they're, they're very engaging, by the way. Like they pick the right people. It's like, I don't know. I'm not, I haven't really done a lot of our programs. I've kind of, you know, I know what they're about. I do remember P90X because I remember my clients having these DVD DVDs. And I was like, why, why did you spend all that money on these DVDs? What are these all about? So they burned me a copy and I remember watching it. He's very funny. So, uh, but you are very interested in job one now because it's always like the team feeling of being there. Oh, okay, that's good to know. That's just not my, um, since I've worked with clients for so long one-on-one, -on -one, that's the approach I wanted to use with job one. So it's definitely something that when you try it, what the feedback Beachbody has received is, wow. I really like the no cast. I didn't know I would not like it. Uh, I wouldn't know, I didn't think I would like it, but she's literally talking to me. Oh, okay, see Rachel, there's her experience. It feels like it's one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, good, I'm glad we achieved that. You know, I had asked for a, if you know anything about film, a steady cam. And a steady cam is, I guess they had never used that in Beachbody production. So they were like, no, JJ, can I was like, no, 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 no. I really need the steady cam. Trust me, it's gonna produce even, and they're because they're so used to their talent talking forward. So steady cam comes here, right? Steady cam comes there. And they didn't understand that I talk to that, like we're here, you and me. So when I'm talking, I'm literally trying to talk to you. And that's just naturally how I train people. So Lori, I'm excited to see you in the Dominican Republic too. So anyone who's going to Punta Cana, yes, let's go hard. Is there a lot? Oh, okay. <laughs> I love it. All right, well, I'll have to bring some of you on stage with me then. Like, why not, right? Danielle's like, okay, yes, I'm there. <laughs> Someone's like, yes, Danielle's going. Okay, so Danielle, we'll figure it out which day and what time, yes. Okay, excited. So excited to meet you eventually in person one day. In the meantime, I'm excited to take you through this journey of job one. So if you've been on the fence, you've been a little hesitant, I don't know. Now you know me a little bit better. Now you know that when it comes to how I'm training you in this program, it's no nonsense. It's straight to the point. And that was the intention behind this. Doesn't mean in another program it won't be, you know, less non or more nonsense. I don't know, <laughs> but this was this was the goal. This was the goal to get in, get out, but not feel like a drill sergeant. Not feel like, oh, I can't connect at all. So enough connection, enough going into that mindset without it feeling a little too much, because sometimes it can feel like a little forced. This is things that naturally come from me that I wanted to say to you. 
especially if it's your first time. So it really means a lot to me for you to press play on job one because it's something I created for everyone to enjoy. I don't care if you're far into your fitness or you're just starting out, I'm gonna meet you exactly where you're at and I'm gonna challenge you to push yourself just a little bit more. I'm not gonna push you, you push yourself, I challenge you. Oh, you're welcome, thank you so much. We'll have to do this again in the future, like a little more virtual activity, moving our bodies, doing a little like, I don't know, cook something together, something fun. Thank you so much, Jennifer, we so appreciate you. You are welcome. And I'll see some of your faces at Punta Cana. And I'll see some of you just starting to post about job one now that you're going to press play and start and take action, make yourself a priority. Remember, you only have one body. So it's absolutely the moment to make yourself your number one priority. Okay. Don't feel selfish in that by any means. Have a good night, everybody. Yes. Oh my. A la playa. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Did that really just happen? Like what? Yeah. <laughs> right? so crazy. Like, on the phone. <laughs> You're so cute, Lauren. Yes, I love it. <laughs> Thank you guys.